praise team and musicians for ministering. <laughs> yeah, for ministering to us. And for those of you that are in the building and those of you that are viewing via Facebook and YouTube, you know that we've skipped over some things this morning. For those of you know that uh, normally we would have been in a place where we would have done the offering and made announcements and played videos. Well, for those of you that know how we give, uh, you, you know what to do. Uh, Pastor Norman would come back up at the end of service and do the regular routine of putting all the stuff up on the screen so you would be able to, to give that way. But for the, some of you already got it locked in your phones. You know exactly what to do. Uh, I, 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 I'm a firm believer that when you live the life of a giver, you are always on ready to give. And that's how we live. I totally understand what, as a pastor, I'm believing God for concerning Love Alive Church. So I understand that according to my faith, I'm making it personal. I understand you got your part, but I'm making it personal. According to my faith, be it done unto me. And I understand that in order for it to be done unto me, I have to do what the Bible says in order to usher resources into my world so that we could be as a ministry everything that we're supposed to be. So therefore, I walk outside and everywhere I go, I'm looking for the opportunity yes, sir. Yes, sir. to get something from me to somebody else because I know what my future looks like. And I want you to do the same thing. A seed does not serve a purpose in a bag on a shelf in a store. But if you take the same seed and you took it out the bag, put it in good ground, it will produce the picture that's on the front of the bag. Yeah, yeah, it will produce the picture. See, why am I telling you this? When you begin to give, there should be a picture that you have based on what you are expecting that seed to produce. And when you give the seed an image and a target, it will generate just what you saw on the front of the package. <laughs> Pastor Norman, I'd be out and it was so funny. We was in this spot the other night. And uh, we went to one of the, what is it called, the hibachi places? Yeah, Japanese steakhouse. Yeah, I'm trying to be all fancy. How about you? <laughs> Japanese steakhouse. And, and we sat there with some couples. And I must have a look. Or this or Pastor Norma is really tuned into me. She, she looked over at me. She said, you're thinking about paying for, this, for these people food, aren't you? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I am. And, and so we, 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 we do things because we understand we got big things on the horizon. So every moment we get, we got to get something because, see, in order, the, the seed that we sow is not just for us. The harvest is not just for us. When we sow seed, the harvest is, has you in mind. See, the, the, the better our life get, the better your life get. So we took and we you know, do what we normally do, you know. And, and then we were walking out the door, and then there was another group of people sitting there. Yeah, it was about ten of them, eight, nine, ten of them. And it, it, it swelled up in me again. So we get up front. We say, now, we don't need the people to know nothing about us. We just want to know what the cost is, and we're going to pay, and we're going to go on, mosey on about our business. We ain't trying to be seen or get credit for it. We understand that we desire to be a distribution plant for heaven. And in order for God to trust us, we have to keep resources going out. 
See, a distribution center is not designed to hold stuff for an extended period. Of it's, a, it's a funnel that you send stuff out into other people's worlds. So that's what we desire to do. So, and, and, that, and, and that's what we, we did. And I'm telling you, if you didn't know better, you'd have thought somebody just gave us a million dollars. I'm talking about the ability just to make a, put a smile on somebody's face. To know that, uh, we, we knew that that last group that we, we paid for their stuff, we knew they was, who, who did this? We, we know we messed them up. We know, we know, and you, unless heaven say so, you will never get a chance to talk to us. Why? Because we ain't trying to get no credit for it. And I went way around there just to tell you, because I, I always want to encourage you on understanding that whatever you have is only a resource. It's only a resource. And I, I forgot something. Uh, uh, Africa sent you all s uh, s some gifts. Uh, I, I got to bring, I, they're in my office at home. I, man, I, uh, uh, Pastor Ken, he does handmade jewelry. So he sent us a bag for his Love Alive church family of necklaces and bracelets. And, and see, so, so, so now... You, you can say that you have some authentic, straight from Uganda, jewelry that you're going to be able to put on. I'll have that back here next week. I think there's, well, I don't know, it, it, we, we'll put it up front. You could get it as you go. Now, don't be trying to pick up one for me, Ma. Get one for yourself. And, and until we run out now, we have some extra, then you might be able to get a second one. But just grab something and then... I don't care if you put it in a frame, but just be able to say, man, this all the way. This is all the way. Came in a bag to where the bag traveled so far, the bag was falling apart. They had to put tape on it all the way from Africa. My Jesus. So, but today, we're going to start a new message. I just, man, you know, praise team, when you, when, when you come in and you, you, you read it and you pull the trigger, right, you just make something happen on the inside of all of us. It'd be hard for me to preach after you be done did what you did because I really believe, I will teach you a lesson, but I really believe that some of the things that you need that you got right there in the moment of praise and worship, it's not as though you had to wait for the word of God to come in the teaching form to get what you needed. Many of you were plugged in, so while they ministered both in song and word up here, you got your breakthrough. Yeah, don't, don't put all that, don't wait until the message comes. You, you do understand that when David used to sing and, 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 and King Saul was under duress, he would, he, David's singing would cause the demons to back up off of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so, 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 so there, there, there's what we call deliverance right there in the midst of praise and worship. That's why you can't rush through it. You know, that's why, you know, that, that I love doing what I do, but you, you know what I understand? I understand that sometimes God might take a different angle based on how somebody else receives. See, somebody received this morning from what the praise team and the musicians did that may, may not receive from when I teach. But it doesn't matter because as long as the job gets done, that's all we're concerned about. We just want to see you free. Those of you that are out there on Facebook and YouTube, it doesn't matter how it come. I, I know why you were there and you had your hands lifted in your living room and in your bedroom and in your kitchen. I know something happened right there in, during praise and worship. Well, that's not by accident or coincidence. That's divine. That's by divine appointment. That's what God had on the agenda for this day. So embrace whatever you needed and understand that you already have it. It's already done. Yes, yeah, already done. The sickness is already healed. The check is already en route to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Depression is already gone. Yeah, yeah. The children are already coming home. The husband decided that you are more important than what he was running after. It happened right there in the midst of praise and worship. We learned when we was in Bible school says that your praise will paralyze the devil. It will cause him to have to cease and desist. Yeah. And you do understand everything you need is when you can enter into the Holy of Holies. If you can just get there 
If I, if I could just get before God, I know everything I need is right there. Well, they took us on a journey this morning to where they took you in to the Holy of Holies. And the good thing about entering into that space, your problems cannot accompany you there. So, I'm excited about your life. And for those of you that might not know, I attend Love Alive Church. <laughs> when I'm out in the public, people that don't know me, they say, what church you go to? I say, I attend Love Alive Church. I don't never say I'm the pastor. I just attend. Because you might come up in here and something happen, and it don't happen through me. I just play a role. Yeah, yeah, that's all. That's all. Topic this morning is, in the next several minutes is, it's the blood for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the blood for, for me. And if you understand what that really means, it was the blood for you. And, and, and if you ever grab hold to the, the power that's in the blood, I believe our lives would never be the same. I believe that if we really understood what is this shedding of blood that changes our lives? Yeah, what is it? What is it? There used to be a story of the people and, and, and in, in certain countries and if there was a community, a small tribe of people over here and a, a big tribe over here, the, the small tribe would want to do what they call cut the covenant because they understood if they cut the covenant, they ain't have to worry about that big tribe ever overtaking them. I read something a couple of days ago and it said that uh, the person who wrote it said that he did a study, said that he could not find one incident in Africa where they had broken the covenant. Because the co cutting the covenant, it's the blood. It's a blood covenant. They say the two people, in many cases, would cut their arm, drop some of the blood in a glass of wine from both parties. And one party would drink half of it, and the other person would drink the other half of it. And then once they did that, they became what we know as blood brothers. When you became a blood brother in covenant because of the shed blood, whatever that person had now belongs to you. But it was something that was said in there that really caught my attention. It, you had access to what they had only if you needed it. <laughs> that kind of, you know how sometimes if I come in covenant with you, and you know you can have access to my stuff. You will just want it whether you need it or not. It said only when you needed it, when you had a purpose for desiring it. And say that if you ever broke the blood covenant, say that the ground that you walked on was no good. And say that your family members would turn you in because... It was a sacred event where both parties had a responsibility. Well, during this series, we're not only going to talk about how men have covenants. We're going to talk about what God did when he decided he wanted to come in covenant with us. See, sometimes, and I, also in my study, you know, we claim a lot of what Israel, the Jews claim. <laughs> and then I realized that I think I understand why a lot of time it don't make its way into our world. We want what they were given by God, but we don't understand that there were requirements in the covenant that was cut for them when God cut the covenant with Abraham. There were certain things that they could not do and if they did those things they violated the covenant we want what they got but we are co 
constant violators of the covenant. We violate the covenant and we do it under the shadow of grace. <laughs> God's grace is sufficient. It is. But that don't allow us to be a rogue and just go out and break the covenant just because there's grace to cover us. So God is a God who makes covenant, blood seal covenants for the purpose of establishing a right relationship with us, his children. He cut blood covenants. And, and, and this was exciting to me because when you really look at why it was so important for Jesus to come and what Jesus had to accomplish, it makes you love him even more. The word covenant is used 298 times in the word of God. Open your Bibles to Matthew, the 26th chapter. 26 down through the 28th verse. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And what we're doing, we're just doing an intro this week. We're going to deal with the different types of covenants. We, we're going to look at, because I believe on the other side of this lesson, if we learn from it and understand our role, we will be the better as followers of Jesus Christ. So Matthew, the 26th chapter, 26 through the 28th verse, it reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, blessed, prayed to the Father, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Here it is, he said, take the bread, eat it. It's a representation, it's symbolic of my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood. Say, that whatever was in the cup, it was symbolic, a representation of his blood of the new covenant. Well, the new covenant, in order for there to be a new covenant, there had to be an old covenant. And why wasn't the old covenant still sufficient for what was necessary in this time that Jesus was in? I don't know about you, but I, I have questions. So verse 28, verse 28, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many, which is shed for many. That was an interesting statement there because why didn't it say which was shared for everybody? Hmm. But it was shared for many. So I'm, I'm a, now I got to make sure. Since it's not for everybody and I need to be included, you need to be included in the many. We need to know what the many look like. Which is shared for many for the remission of sin, for, for, for the, the, the forgiveness of sin. Even though the Bible says that God sent his only begotten son so that no one would perish, so that everyone should have everlasting life. So we understand the plan of God was for everybody to benefit from what Jesus was going to do. But here Jesus say many, understanding that the only reason it's many and not all, some people would respond appropriately to what Jesus did and others decide that they want to do their own thing. So here we go. Now, once again, the word remission means forgiveness or pardon of sin. Genesis, the, the Hebrew word bereaf is defined as, as a compact. A compact, a covenant made by passing between pieces of flesh, which implies the thought of cutting a covenant. Back in the day, back in the Old Testament, when they cut a covenant, they take animals, they split them down in the middle, put them on one on this side, one on this side, leave them in the middle where there'll be blood, and someone would travel through the blood. They're cutting the covenant with, that was one of the ways they cut covenant. Came into covenant. But the problem with that was, many times, they, 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 they cut the covenant, and let's say spiritually, once a year, the priest would go into what we call the Holy of Holies. He'd go in there. The people would bring all their sacrifices. He'd go in there. And, you know, we told a story about how the priest going in there. He got that rope tied down to his ankle, and there's a bell on him. And if the priest went in there, if the priest was not good, you wouldn't hear nothing. 
That's why they got the rope. Because, see, you could not go into the Holy of Holies unless you were the priest. So they had to make sure that if the priest had sin, when the priest entered in there and dropped dead, we got to get the priest out of the Holy of Holies. So the priest got a rope. And the priest moving around, sprinkling blood, and, and, and getting the place, making the sacrifices on behalf of the people. And as long as you hear those bells chingling, ding-a-ling, ring-a-ling, you know the priest's all right. It's ring-a-ling, priest good, priest good, ring-a-ling. But if it ever went ring, <laughs> priest in trouble, priest dead. That means the priest went into the Holy of Holies, and the priest went in there with unclean hands. So he, he took sin in the presence of God and sin cannot stand in the presence of God. So the priest would die and boom. So now, but every year they got to repeat this. I, I, I'd hate to be a goat. I would hate to have been a, a chicken, a bird, or anything that they sacrificed back because you don't know when your number coming up. Every year, all these people coming and they're bringing these, these things. And that would only take care of it for a season, just for a moment. You know, just for a moment. See, that means I done messed up all year. And you could tell who done sinned. I know I would have been in the line all the time. I'd have been dragging my little pitiful goat right on up there with me. Because, whoo, Jesus. Yeah, your little goat wouldn't stand a chance. Little goat would have wanted another owner. Because you know where your journey is leading you. Straight to the slaughter. So here it is. But that was not good enough. So man continued to break the covenant. Man was incapable of keeping the covenant with God. So God had a more excellent way of getting this done. And we're going to talk about the excellent way, not today, but we're going to talk about the excellent way that God was able to get it done. I wouldn't miss the next few weeks. I'm telling you, if I, if I had to work, I'd take vacation. I'm just saying why do we need a new covenant? Because we couldn't keep the old. That's right. That's right. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, 22nd verse from the Amplified Bible. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, 22nd verse from the Amplified Bible. It reads, in fact, under the law, almost everything is cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness, neither release from sin, and it's guilt nor cancellation of the merited punishment. So without the shedding of blood, without the covenant, you and I would have to live all of our days being condemned by the sin we committed. And when we died, even though we've lived in anguish of being mad and disappointed in how we lived our lives, when we died, we'd go to the awful place called hell. Without the shedding of blood. So I don't know about you, but that's enough right there to just make me say, thank you, Lord, for, for, for having stayed. Even when we broke the covenant, the, the, what you had in mind was greater than our deeds and our, our actions. And the reasons for cutting the covenant. Well, let's talk about what, what, what is a covenant. I'm so glad you asked. A covenant signifies a mutual understanding between two or more parties, each binding himself to fulfill specified obligations. Legal contract, a binding agreement, a written agreement, it also refers to, sol to a solemn agreement to do or not to do a certain thing. So whatever the requirements are in a covenant, it's laid out. It's not left for you to have to figure out what your role is, what your benefits are, what the other person's role is, and what the benefits are to them. It's laid out. It's a contract. Well, one of the things that I look at when I think about the covenant is if it's laid out, if it's between people, in many cases, sometimes it's between people who are just friends, people who are in business, it's between kingdoms and their people that's, uh, that's, a, that's a part of their kingdom. There, there are all types of covenants. But the thing I need to know going forward is I know I have a covenant with God. And because I have a covenant with God, 
I need to make sure that I understand what my role is in the covenant. Because there's no doubt in my mind whether or not God will uphold his end of the deal. But in order for me to benefit from my relationship with God, I got to know what I'm supposed to do and make sure that I do what I'm supposed to do. See, a lot of times we hold God accountable. Well, Lord, you said that you will bless me coming in and bless me going out. But we never talk about what if I done just did everything in violation to the relationship? What if I don't do anything? What if there are laws that you put in place that tell me how I'm supposed to conduct myself, how I'm supposed to act, what I need to do in order to receive from you, and I don't do those things? So really, based on how a covenant is ran, I can disqualify myself for the thing, from the things that I'm supposed to get. You did hear me say earlier that in it, between two men, if they were in covenant and they violated it, their family members would turn them in and it said that because of the disgrace that they brought on everybody and because of their dishonesty, the very ground that they walked on was cursed. What a way to live. Let's imagine everywhere you walk. And, and here it is. I'm going to draw a picture for you. Imagine you walk, the ground was green and plush and beautiful, and, and the trees were all pretty, and, and all of a sudden, everywhere you step, because you are on a curse, you step on beautiful ground, and now it's dead. Everywhere you touch, it's, it's cursed. It's beautiful all around you, but everywhere you touch, it's cursed. The trees start dying when you show up. The grass starts dying when you grow up. The real estate starts to die when you show up. Everything that you, you touch. The dogs look sick in the community where you touch. What's different about your ground and the other ground over here? So I just had that picture when they said, they said, well, the ground is cursed. I said, well, dear Lord, the ground is cursed. But what happens to a cursed ground? It, does no, it no longer produce. First Kings, the 15th chapter, 19th verse, New Kings James Version. It says, let there be a treaty between you. Let there be a covenant between you and me as there was between my father and your father. See, I have sent you a present of silver and gold. That was one of the things they said too. When two people were getting ready to cut a covenant, you know, and they, they show up, they show up bearing gifts. And, and the covenant was always conducted by a priest. Interesting. Yeah, in a holy place. See, I have sent you a present of silver and gold. Come and break your come and come and break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. I want you to come in contact with me so that I can get some things rearranged, some things changed. So if, a, if two businessmen entered into a partnership, might cut the covenant to ensure that neither take advantage of the other. Imagine if we did that now. My God, it, the business relationships would be so much better, but a lot of times before the ink dry, they done betrayed each other. Yeah, can't even get out the door. Why are they signing? They're thinking, I'm going to get you. But the mind of God is if you cut a covenant, the only thing uh, the, the covenant is, it's putting you in a position to where you commit to saying that I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to be honest. When the last time we done cut some covenants? When you cut the covenant with God, are you upholding your end of the deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does the Bible say that you don't do? That you don't do? Because this is a book of covenants. It, it, it's, it's a book that says, see, a lot of time we, well, you know, the Lord said, but the book is a book of covenants. The book is saying that this applies to people who are in covenant with him. First Samuel 18th chapter, third verse. It says, 
Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. One of the greatest stories in the Bible to me, my opinion, is the story about David and Jonathan. See, see this, is, this thing here, David loved Jonathan so much where after Jonathan was there, David went and found Jonathan's loved ones and said, is there any of Jonathan's descendants left? I just want to bless him. Because when you cut a covenant, one of my studies found that the covenant that, I, let, let's say Jason and I cut a covenant and, and we don't violate it, that covenant will go not only between the two of us, but it will last generations and generations and generations to come. That was the importance. So if I promise Jason protection and Jason died, the same protection that I promised him, his children should, and his children's children, and his children's children. Are you aware how important that is? That's saying that if you do right by God and you honor the covenant with God, I'm talking about generations and generations and generations will benefit just because you upheld your end of the bargain. I'm talking about, can you imagine? See, there have been some things I don't know about you, but there are some things that's been in my family line for years. Well, I understand that the only thing going to break some of these generational curses, generational things that's happening is the Davises honoring the covenant. We don't just get up and say, well, Lord, bless us and bless us and, and our children and, 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 and just get on up. No, 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 no. We got a church family that we have to pray for. We got our, our extended families. See, see, I don't know about you, but it's important that my family go to heaven with me. It's important that my church family go to heaven with me. So, so when, I, when I get up, I understand, Lord, whatever it takes for me to live right, whatever it takes, I'm going to meet with you daily. I'm going to talk to you about these people daily, and I'm going to live so that I don't get in the way of what you will do for me. I'm going to honor the covenant. And, and guess what? Because I'm going to honor the cup, something great is going to always show up in my life. So over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about the different covenants. We're going to talk about what does it look like to be a covenant partner with God? He's your covenant partner. And I'm talking about he has some great things in store for you. If you learn your part and master your part, I'm telling you that there were things that he promised the children of Israel, and when you look at the Jews right now, you see that the covenant is still being performed in their life. You do understand that they're some of the wealthiest people on the planet. That was part of the, 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 the deal that they cut with God. You do understand protection was one of the things that the Jews were told that would be theirs, but you do know that, 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 that Israel sits right in the center of, and surrounded by all of their enemies, a little old tiny little thing compared to everything around them. And think about some of David's men when they would go to war. One man could kill hundreds of people. They would give supernatural power to fight battles and win, and you didn't need a whole arsenal, a whole garrison of people to get it done. How many times have people tried to overtake Israel to fail? Well, that's the covenant. They talk about how even the, 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 the ground produces over there. They talk about how big the grapes are and the fruits. and what, what, what makes the ground produce like that? They had a covenant with God. So if you want your life to get better, you better honor your covenant part with God. And I'm saying that whatever I could find in the Bible that he did for somebody else, and I understand that they were under the old covenant. Yeah, they're under the old covenant. You got a better covenant. You, 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 you got a covenant. All you got to do is stay on the right side of Team Jesus and do what the Bible tells you to do. Jesus is already the price. See, before it was about bulls and goats and birds. And now, when Jesus came, Jesus shed his blood. And that blood was enough to last throughout eternity. So if you honor the covenant, with your new covenant partner. His name is Jesus. I'm telling you, everything you need will explode in your life. 
Because the Bible even says said that what Jesus did is a, 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 a better covenant. Well, if y'all, if, if, if the children of Israel got all that they got, and, and, and they still feasting off of it today, and you tell me my covenant, my New Testament covenant, is better. Don't you think I need to find out what my benefit packet looked like in my new covenant? Y'all better stop. So, and that's all I'm going to give you this week. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't dare. Yeah, Jason, you can start playing because I'm not going to give out this goodness today. You might not come back next week if you find out because you'll be out there trying to work on your little covenant benefits. No, I'm going to do little drops of this every, give you little drops every week, keep you coming back. But I'm telling you, if you really know who you are in God, it's a game changer. You'll stop taking life and putting it on your shoulders, trying to carry it yourself. The price has already been paid. Jesus did all the heavy lifting. But if you don't understand that, you're going to go pick up what he's already picked up and you're going to carry it when you were not built to carry it. You're, you are covenant partners with the Most High God, Mr. Creator himself. So let's decide today that as we begin to explore this and, and we understand who we are, and we understand what our benefit packet looks like, we will not spend one more day looking like who we're not. You were created to live in the best, to drive the best, to wear the best, to eat the best, and to go first class in life. Yeah. But the thing is, when my heart, I was at John Ayers many years ago, and I heard my pastor, Dr. David Thomas, say, when my heart is right towards God and my desire is to please him, he is obligated to bring me into the company of the people I need to know, into the knowledge of the things I need to know that are critical for my success, destiny, and purpose in life. When my heart is right towards him. Some of the things that are preventing you and I from getting where we're supposed to be there's a heart condition that's blocking it. But when you get your heart right, and see, when your heart is right, your actions will follow your heart. You will become people that are obedient to what the Father has instructed you to do, and then he will bring you into the company, into the presence of everything that you need. I don't know about you, but I'm doing a heart check. And that's what this series is going to do for us. It's going to make you hungry to know that there are things that you've been promised. When you said yes to Jesus, there were things that came with your yes. And it's kind of like the little boy, and I'm going to close, it's kind of like the, the, it wasn't a little boy, it was a man who went on a cruise. And he paid for his ticket and the whole time he was on the cruise, he, he had packed, prior to getting on the boat, he had packed up some saltine crackers and some water, took that in his room, and he, he sat there and, and he ate saltine crackers and drank his water on a cruise. You know, you eat more on a cruise than you ever in your life when you go on a cruise. But because he thought that what he paid, he thought the ticket only covered the trip. He ate crackers and saltine until one day the, they realized he wasn't making it out for any of those, you know, those special dinners that they give you. <laughs> they said, and they came, knocked on the, on the door and saying, hi, we just wanted to know. We, we realized we haven't seen you at any of the gatherings or up getting any food. And, and he looked up and he said, I was not aware that that came with the ticket. Well, why is that important to you? When you said yes to salvation, you didn't take time to read the fine print 
and understand all the goodness that came with your yes. Well, that's what we're going to explore. I want to lay out the benefits of your yes. And we'll start that journey next week. But now there's somebody in here in the building or viewing on Facebook or YouTube. You need to make a decision before next week. Because what I'm talking about is reserved for those that are in covenant. You're probably saying, if, you, if you're not in covenant, well, what do I need to do to get in covenant? I'm so glad you asked. You have, you have to start this journey off by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And if with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, and you do... You make Jesus Lord of your life by repeating at what I'm about to say. Say, repeat after me, everybody. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for loving me. Lord Jesus, I choose this day to accept you as my personal Lord and my personal Savior. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, that you are the Son of God and that you were raised from the dead. And therefore, I am now in covenant with you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for me. And then now there are some others out there, while all heads are still bowed and all eyes are closed, there are some of you out there that you did make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life at some point in time. But you know you haven't been living the life the way that you should, the Christian life I'm speaking of. Well, you want to get right too so that when we start this journey on understanding our covenant right as covenant partners, you want to make sure that you can move right into the benefits of being a partner with God. And therefore, you need to rededicate your life. So for those of you that know you haven't been living the Christian life the way that you should, whether you're in the building or on Facebook or YouTube, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord, for paying the price for me. And from this day forward, Jesus, I'm going to live my life serving you. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for never giving up on me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, congratulations to all of you that made a decision for the very first time to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You are now a covenant partner with the Lord Jesus. Therefore, you qualify for what we're going to discuss. Congratulations to all of you that rededicated your life. Understand God was never mad with you. Understand that God was waiting on you to do what you just did. And it's just like you never left. He put you right back where you had left from because he loved you just like that. And if you would, for those of you that are in the building, if you made a decision for Jesus Christ for the very first time or if you rededicated your life, see one of the greeters or ushers or hostesses on your way out and they will be glad to give you this little pamphlet that I'm holding up, a little pamphlet that says yes. And really what it's saying yes to, you just said yes to Jesus, yes to allowing God to, 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 to lead and guide you into the great things he has for your life. But sometimes when we say yes, we still mess up, we have questions. Well, this little pamphlet will answer a lot of the questions that you have. And that also apply to you all that are viewing on Facebook and YouTube. If you are one of those people that made a decision today, I want you to just write in the comment section, I am now a covenant partner. Yes, I am now a covenant partner. I am now a covenant partner. Yes, I. who am I? I am now a covenant partner. Well, covenant partner with who? I'm a covenant partner with Mr. Creator himself. His name is God. His son is Jesus. So put in there, I am a covenant partner. I am now a covenant partner. And we'll get one of these out to you. And for those of you that are viewing on Facebook and YouTube, 
If there's something that we can pray with you about, please let us know, and we'll gladly reach out to you. A member of our team will gladly reach out to you. We would love to pray with you. We would love to connect with you if, you, if you've never met us. We would love to, to, to just love on you and say congratulations to the beginning of the best days of your life. So we thank you, and God bless you. We'll see you next time. We'll see you uh, as you begin to walk out all of the goodness that God has in store for you. You no longer have to sit in the bow of the boat and eat crackers and drink water. You can come up and have some of the goodness that's on top waiting on you. God bless. See you next week.